Next stop, Willow Park Church. I welcome you in the name of Jesus. My name is Larry Jones. Let's get at it. Intermittently throughout this video book, I am taking you on a tour of Kelowna's evangelical churches, highlighting what appears to be the five largest, Grace Baptist Church, Evangel Church, Kelowna Christian Center, Willow Park Church, and New Life Church. I've already featured Trinity Baptist, Evangel, and Kelowna Christian Center. Next stop, Willow Park Church. Willow Park Church is a Mennonite assemblage. Mennonites are called Mennonites because of a fellow by the name of Menno Simon, born in the Netherlands the same year Columbus discovered America. Menno started as a Catholic priest, was influenced by Luther and other reformers, rebelled against the Catholic establishment, and preached relevant Bible truths. Menno Simon would probably be astonished to know that today, millions of Christians in Europe, North America, and elsewhere are identified by his first name. In Canada alone, there are almost 250 Mennonite churches, one of which is Willow Park Church in Kelowna. I've never attended a service at Willow Park Church. Nonetheless, I feel I have a good sense of its spiritual condition simply by what I hear others saying over several years. People do speak well of Willow Park. I have heard of several good reports and only a few negatives. It seems like battered and bruised Christians from other churches find solace and safety at Willow Park. There were times not many years ago Willow Park held about six services each weekend to accommodate the swelling congregation. Now, instead of so many services in one building, they hold services at four church locations. I have listened to three Sunday sermons available on the internet from those who seem to be Willow Park's chief speakers. One indicator of an assembly's spiritual welfare, as I have said in previous chapters, is the number of times they collectively speak the name of Jesus. We can see that in a marriage. A loving spouse speaks often of the loved spouse. Can't help it. What is in the heart spills out of the heart. With that in mind, does Willow Park fare better than the first three churches already covered in this spiritual tour of Kelowna? Yes, it does. Somewhat. Let's look at it. I monitored three sermons from the five mentioned churches. Willow Park pulpit people spoke the name of Jesus four times as often as Trinity Baptist, two and a half times more often than Evangel, and twice as often as Kelowna Christian Center. Also to its credit, Willow Park spoke church less, less than half both Trinity and Evangel, and, almost, and also much less than Kelowna Christian Center. This does not nearly equate with New Testament writings, but it's refreshing to see a church not so us-centered, just like it's refreshing to be in the company of one who is not me-centered. But all this does not give credibility to evangelicalism. To make that point, we simply look at Catholicism. In Kelowna, there are five Roman Catholic churches. If these churches could be graded we would see that one church ranks higher than the others. Somebody has to be on top. But such a church, though better than the others, is not an endorsement of Catholicism. Likewise, the good, the good proceeding from Willow Park Church and all other evangelical churches in Kelowna and elsewhere is not an endorsement of evangelicalism. Evangelicalism is shamefully and transparently wasteful. Perhaps in Kelowna this can best be realized by the other four evangelical churches within a short distance from Willow Park Church. Let's go for a walk. Willow Park Church fronts onto Highway 33. 
As we take this stroll down Highway 33, let us consider the great commission the Lord Jesus gave to the apostles and to his church minutes before his ascension into heaven. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. A seven-minute walk takes us to Kelowna Christian Center. A seven-minute walk. Kelowna Christian Center also faces Highway 33. An obvious question would be, why two evangelical churches, church buildings so close to each other? Why can't they share the same building? thus acutely cutting the cost to each congregation. That would mean more money to finance the Great Commission. A further six minutes down Highway 33 takes us to a large Seventh-day Adventist church. One might think that since Seventh-day Adventists gather on Saturdays, they can make an arrangement with both Kelowna Christian Center and Willow Park to use their building on Sundays. Both Willow Park and Kelowna Christian Center could sell their multi-million dollar properties and invest enormous funds into the Great Commission. Untold multitudes would be reached for Christ. A further three-minute walk down Highway 33 takes us to a fourth evangelical church. This one, a Nazarene church. This building isn't huge, but it can hold, I suppose, four or five hundred people. Directly across the road from the Nazarene Church is the New Apostolic Church, a smaller church that probably holds a couple of hundred people. This makes it five evangelical churches within a 17-minute walk from Willow Park Church. We could all see the oddity and waste of five Catholic churches so close together. Why can we not see the oddity and waste of five evangelical churches so close together? When walking from Willow Park to Kelowna Christian Center, we pass a McDonald's. How peculiar it would be if there were five McDonald's close together within 17 minutes walk one McDonald's selling Big Macs, another selling only, only Quarter Pounders with cheese, another selling McChicken sandwiches, and another sold only Happy Meals, and the fifth McDonald's sold Egg McMuffins. Ludicrous? Yes. Wasteful? Yes. Bad business? Yes. Evangelical waste and folly is all around us, but few see it. Many actually think that God is its architect, but he isn't. Each of us will have to give an account to the Lord Jesus. What will we do with his words? What will we do with his words? Will we be the wise man who heard his words and built upon them, or the foolish man who heard his words and built on the words of evangelicalism. I have shown you five churches. Each church is a government of sorts, complete with rulers and ruled. In all of Scripture, a church building cannot be found. In all of Scripture, a board of elders cannot be found. In all of Scripture, we cannot find a salaried pastor. In all scripture, we cannot find anything resembling the evangelical tithe. What we find in our Bible is God's warning that we must give an account to the Lord Jesus Christ. A wise man he heeds the command of Jesus, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. The Great Commission should be priority. The Great Commission should be our chief investment. The, chief, the Great uh, Commission should not get our leftover change. Investing money into the evangelical religion is a poor investment indeed. Obedience to Christ 
will draw us closer to Christ. Selfish pampering within luxurious church walls will have a negative effect on the togetherness we have with the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Relationship. It's all about relationship. How can such a simple truth be so difficult to understand?